Number one, listen for God's call. Listen for God's calling. When he sends the invitation, don't you love when you get an invitation from somebody? They send you a text, hey, can you want to you grab some coffee? Hey, you want to try this, this new restaurant that they just opened up? I just had a conversation with someone that was like, yo, bro, I went to this spot. Oh, word. Yeah, the line was wrapped around the building, but it was all good. We should go one day. I'm like, yeah, just, just that, that future invitation is like, oh, looking forward to something. But here it is. When Jesus calls and he sends an invitation, could you imagine Jesus sending you a text message? Hey, can we meet tomorrow? Could you imagine that Jesus sending you a text message and saying, hey, can we meet tomorrow? I believe that through his word, he's continuously asking us to sit at the table with him. The moment you wake up in the morning, you wake up and saying, Lord, Lord, can we have a meeting real quick? Can we open up scripture right now, Lord, and speak to me as we sit at this table? Your table can be anywhere. Your table can be anywhere when you're inviting the presence of God come in. And God is calling us to sit at his table and he's calling. Will you listen to the call? Church, will you listen to the call of God when he's saying it's time for us to sit at the table? Are we able and willing? Are we not so distracted that we're able to spend at least one hour in prayer seated at the table with Jesus where he can speak to our hearts, where he can instruct us, where he gives us his plans? When sometimes we are, don't know how to make one decision and God is saying, all of you have to come and sit at the table and I will help you through it. Come on, my plans are better. My plans are better. I have everything written out for you to just sit and listen to the plans that I have for you. Stop trying to do it on your own. Let me be greater in your life. Let me be greater in your life. Give him all of your attention. When you're seated at the table, give him your undivided attention. Pastor, what do you mean by that? It means to shut off your phones. It means to shut off all distractions. It means to put all, everyone else to the side. They can wait. This is urgent. I need to sit at the table with my God, my Savior, my Counselor, my Redeemer, my King, my Lord, my, my goodness. What a special invitation. He is inviting me to sit at the table, not just one day, every day open access because he is our God and our king give him your undivided attention open up your heart make eye contact imagine Jesus sitting in front of you envision him in front of you I love scripture because scripture is is a lot of illustrations it's not a lot of times it's not specific and when it's specific, specific. But there's a lot of um, imagery in scripture as well. As you study scriptures, imagery is an imagination. It's something for you to imagine how it is. We don't know the fullness of how heaven is, but it tells us that it's like streets of gold. Wow. Um, the sea of, 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 of is, is, is shines bright. This imagery. Have you ever been to heaven? No. We haven't been to heaven, but the scriptures gives us imagery of what it is like. The presence of God, like lightning. Lightning, rays of, of lightning comes out of the throne of God. Wow, could you imagine that? There's one throne and the radiance of God shines through. That's imagery in scripture. Could, you can imagine Jesus sitting on the right side of the Father in authority, in control, Sending the Holy Spirit, sending the angels on missions to speak to his church, speak to his people. Why? Because he is a good God and he's sharing his plans constantly with his church through his scripture, through prophetic word. Last night was amazing. God, the Holy Spirit showed up and aligned lives and, 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 and gave word to specific people. Why? Because God is a good father. And if we come open to receive his plans, his purpose over your life, my goodness, your life will never be the same. Open up your heart to Jesus and watch him work in your life. But give him your undivided attention. Give him your undivided attention. It's time we sit at the table. And get some directions and instructions from Jesus. It's time that we sit at his table and allow him to speak into our lives. Lord, I want to get married. 
okay? When should I get married? Do I have proper finances? Do I have things in line? Lord, can you help me do the right thing? Lord, here are my plans. It's good to have plans. It's good to have a plan, to, to have a drawing, to have something out. But Lord, is this your will? And have a meeting with Jesus. I want to get married. I want to have a house. I want to have a husband. I want to have a, 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 a good wife. And some of you have to start praying for a good wife, a good husband that loves Jesus. Come on, somebody. That loves Jesus more than I do. Come on. <laughs> But what plans do you have that you haven't committed to God? What is this, what is this, what are these drawings, these plans that you have in your own mind that you haven't presented to God? And God is saying today, come to me and I will listen. But when we sit at the table, if Jesus is king, you have to be ready for a big eraser to come out. He can wipe it all away and say what you are doing is wrong, is off. I thank you for trying, but I'm glad that you're here. Let me show you my way. And there's so much peace that comes when he is the one who speaks to us and guides us. Oh, my goodness. That's a lot of people say, why didn't I do this sooner? Why did I come to God sooner? But this is what God is trying to tell us, that he needs for us to be committed to his plans. It's time to sit at his table. Have a seat at the table. Have a seat at his table. So I pulled out this table today. You mind if I sit? You guys mind if I sit? No, no, it's cool, it's cool, okay, okay. I have one chair here. That's Jesus' seat, and this is me. But I want you to focus yourself and envision yourself to be seated, seated where I am. And I, I, I shared this, I was in the front and I didn't have this in my notes, but the Holy Spirit said to me, bring out the plans that you have for the church on top. Bring out the plans. So there's a design, there's a drawing that we set together with some architects uh, in 2019. And the vision was, or is to build a second level to our church building on top. This was a vision, a plan. And as I was sitting there, I had to go and search for it through my emails, because the Holy Spirit said, bring them out. I remember sitting at the table with architects and contractors in the second floor in the conference room and it was an amazing uh, experience because as I was speaking to people who don't, do not know Jesus, they felt the presence of God. There were people donating stuff that came out of the woodworks. I was not even expecting it, but it's because we were speaking the language of having a plan together. When you have a plan together, even if it's not right, at least you have one. You have to have a plan. You have to have where you want to be directed, but you have to sit at the table with Jesus for him to guide you and instruct you what not to do and what to do. So these are real plans, guys. This is, no one has seen this, but leaders and people on the inside. But this is the second floor plan that we have, creating a room in the, in the middle section, like a banquet hall, uh, classrooms around it for workshops, bathrooms that we can have retreats, but facing South First Street, there, there's an open area for a garden that we can actually sit outside and take some rays, take some sun, but we have a drawing done in 2019. We don't have the money for it. <laughs> we don't have the money for it, but we have the plans. We have the drawings because this is what the Lord spoke to us about 30 years ago. This is plans, and we are preparing and advancing what God has given us. And just this, this morning, we're, we're getting ready to come out, and my wife says, we need more rooms. We need more rooms. 
And I was like, what do you mean we need more rooms? And I'm getting it now why she said that is to revive the dreams that God has placed in us because there's a drawing and there's a plan because I am the one that is leading you into the right direction. But if you don't have a plan, where are you going? Where are we going? So I wanted to share the drawings because this is what happens in the natural world. But we have to come and we bring all those plans on the table and say, Jesus, are these your plans? Is this your purpose for my life? Is this your purpose with my future? Is this my husband? Is this my wife? Seating, seating at the table is extremely important because they will bring frustration as well. So we have to come time and time again to revisit and make changes where things belong and don't belong. And we have done revisions. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to tell you that when you're doing revisions with architects and plans like this, they charge you for every change. They charge you for every change in the plans. I say, I don't like that table on that corner. Let's move it to this corner. Well, that'll be a fee of $125 for that because it's printing this ink and all this. And Jesus is saying, I'm not charging you a dime. I want to give you my plans and my drawings, my way of doing things. If you stand seated, <laughs> you stand in me, you wait on me, but you have a plan and a purpose in me. What is your plan with God? What do you need for him to do in your life? Bring it to him. Nothing you can say can make him feel like, oh my goodness, what are you talking about? But allow him to speak to your life as you sit at the table with Jesus. As you sit on the table with Jesus.